I made a video a while back about bone broth and all the health benefits of bone broth. Now we're going to go through step by step how to make your own bone broth because it's really simple and it's a lot more cost effective. I've been noticing bone broth popping up all over the country in a variety of different grocery stores, but it's usually pretty expensive. It can be made at home really easily for a lot less money. So the best place to get your bones is your local farmer's market or a local butcher shop. And really what you want to look out for, most importantly for using beef bones, is that they're grass fed. Uh, that's really important for the quality of the bones because things like pesticides, other toxins in there get stored in the bone so you want really high quality bones. And they're pretty easy to find. You can also use chicken bones, lamb, you can use fish bones. Uh, so just quality is important, so wild caught fish, organic chicken, pasture raised lamb. And we're going to do the culinary version of bone broth so you get the most delicious product. You can do a really simple version of just taking your bones, putting them in your crock pot, letting it simmer for a few days and being done. But to get the most flavorful bone broth that you're really going to want to drink on a regular basis, there's a few more steps involved, but they're really easy. So first step is taking your bones, putting them in a pot, and we're just gonna blanch them. So we're gonna fill, these bones came frozen, uh, so this is gonna kinda thaw them out anyways. So we're going to fill the pot with water. And we're going to let this boil for about 20 minutes. And what the blanching process is going to do is just kind of remove any impurities, kind of clean the bones a little bit and take away any of the, some of the gnarly flavors. So if you ever had bone broth, you're like, ooh, this doesn't taste good at all. The bones probably weren't blanched. Uh, so we're going to do that first and that's going to help a lot with the end product. So I'll see you in 20 minutes. Okay, so while your bones are blanching, you wanna preheat your oven to 450 degrees. Now, that first step of blanching, that's if you're using beef bones or bison bones or something like that. Um, if you're using chicken bones or turkey bones, it was just Thanksgiving, it's a great time to use those leftover bones from those turkeys you were roasting. Or if you roast a whole chicken, you can use those bones as well. And after you trim off all the meat, you can use the bones and throw those bones right into the crock pot um, and kind of skip all of this together. But right now we're doing some flavor work on the beef bones. So we blanched them, preheated the oven to 450 degrees, and now we're gonna roast the bones. And this is really gonna bring out a deep flavor in the broth. It's gonna make it really delicious. So you don't wanna put anything on the bones at all. Um, you're blanching them just in pure water and now I've just sprayed a little uh, coconut oil on the pan so they don't stick and we're gonna put these right in the oven and we're gonna bake them um, until they're fully roasted, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes until, almost until they start to look too done. And then we're gonna take them out. So I'll let you know how long that is when I pull them out of the oven. I put them in now and I'll talk to you soon. So we had our bones in the oven for about 40 minutes. And after that, We've got this, got them all roasted and toasted. There we go. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna add them right to the crock pot. But from there, it gets really simple. Now that you've got your bones toasted and you're ready to go, it's it really easy. And all of this is pretty uninvolved. It's all pretty passive. Even if you're going through all these steps and the liquid that's in the pan, you can add that to the broth as well because it's gonna cook out some of the fat while they're roasting in the oven, but you can add that right to the broth. So for broth flavor, there's a few things you wanna consider. You don't wanna put anything in the initial broth that's gonna be extremely strong in the final product. So the broth that I'm gonna to make tonight is gonna to be a combination of ginger, cranberries, and jalapeno. But I'm not gonna do the jalapeno until the last day because you don't wanna create something that's overwhelming for your palate. Also, this is a time to avoid ground black pepper and salt because it's gonna concentrate so heavily. If you've ever made soup before on the stove and you put ground black pepper in it, at the beginning, you probably noticed that the end, it comes out pretty spicy. So since we're gonna do this for about 48 hours, if you put ground black pepper in there now, it's 
gonna come out really spicy and you won't be able to enjoy it. So you wanna think about that as you're melting flavors together. You can do a lot of different flavors. Some people stick with a basic mirepoix and just go with carrot, celery, and onions. That's fine. You can throw garlic cloves in there as well if that's what you like, you can go for that too. Uh, I like aromatics more, so for me the best way to go is a blend of parsley, thyme, rosemary. Just take those fresh herbs, tie them together, and throw them in and let those cook in, into the flavor. I mean, that's more enjoyable for me to drink. But since it's seasonal and I tried a broth recently that had this blend of the ginger, the cranberry, and the jalapeno, and I really enjoyed it. So that's what we're gonna go with now. So we've got our bones in there. I diced up just a nice, nice sized knob of ginger. We're gonna put that in there. And then cranberries. All this is really subjective. You've gotta think about your flavors. And just remember that you're gonna do this for a couple of days if you're using beef bones. If you're using chicken bones, it happens, the process happens a lot more quickly. So you're probably only gonna be in there for 24 to 48 hours. Beef bones, you can go 48 to 72 hours. The Weston A. Price method of bone broth is 72 hours, and I've done that before. It's phenomenal. Um, and after you're done with this, especially chicken bones, which will pretty much melt away into nothing, Beef bones, I'm not so sure, but I've heard that people will take the bones afterwards and actually blend them up, kind of like a gravy, and give them to their dogs, and dogs would love them. Full of protein, really nutritious. So after this, we've got the flavors in there. We're just gonna add water. Two and a half days into our broth, and it's time to put on the finishing touches. I was going to do, if you remember the beginning of the video, cranberry, jalapeno, and ginger. So we put the cranberry and the ginger in in the very beginning. We were going to add the jalapeno the very last day just to add that finishing spiciness. But the grocery store has been out of jalapenos for two days, so I had to improvise a little bit. And I figured sage would go really well with cranberry and ginger. So I got some sage. So I'm going to show you what we've got right now after two and a half days. And then I'm going to add that. Right. So you can see how dark it is. And the cranberries have rehydrated and they almost look like beans in there. You see we've got a very dark broth. Uh, it's going to be very rich in flavor. And then we're just going to take the sage. I'm going to add the whole pack in there. Mix that around. And I'm just going to give this about 12 more hours. And then we're going to drain this off and we'll be all done. So I'll see you this evening when we finish that up. It's been a full 72 hours and we're ready to go. The broth is finished. It's very dark, rich, full of flavor. The whole apartment smells like the broth for the last few days. And now all that's left to do is to pour it out and to put it in containers. So you want to keep what you're going to use in five to seven days in the refrigerator and the rest you want to freeze, that way you keep it fresh. Um, so just kind of think about that. If you're going to have a coffee cup full every day, eight ounces. I made a gallon, um, so I'm going to put a good amount of it in the fridge and the rest in the freezer. But you can do a lot more than drink it. You can also cook with it. Uh, I use it a lot of times as a base for rice or quinoa. Uh, use it in soups, other sauces. Anything that you want to add extra flavor to in place of water. It's a really good use for the broth. 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, to bottle it up, I'm going to take the crock pot, I'm gonna pour it through a strainer um, into the crock that I also use to make kombucha, and then I'm gonna use that since it has the spout to put it in the jars. I think that'll be the easiest way. Um, it's also pretty easy to use like a square cambro that you would use if you were in a restaurant. Something that has an edge um, that after it's strained, it can be poured into. And so I'm gonna do that now and then I'll show you the final product. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There's our beautiful homemade broth. In 72 hours, you can see how dark it is. How those flavors, especially from roasting the bones, how that really came out in the final broth. That's gonna be delicious. So I'm gonna finish filling up my containers and get that put away. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you see how easy it is to get into the kitchen and make some of these things yourself. And this would also be the time if you're gonna drink it. This is what you would want to add in those finishing flavors. If you wanted to throw in a pinch of sea salt to bring out the flavors. If you wanted to make it a sweeter drink and add a little bit of honey or stevia, xylitol, agave, uh, depending on what you want to do with it. Now would be the time, kind of cup by cup, as you drink it, to finish off those flavors for whatever you want to do with it. Um, so it's always best just kind of make the broth itself a little bland so that you can play around with the palate later on and do a variety of things with it since now you have a gallon of wonderful homemade broth. Uh, thanks again for watching this video. I'll see you next